Do you want to know what's inside of Gibson's Robo tuners? We're going to open one up, dissect it under the microscope so we can look at all the miniature components and try to figure out how this thing actually works. There's an old Chinese proverb that says, one day we'll all be replaced by robots. Oh, excuse me. Guitar quackery. I hate robocalls. I tell you, we need to fight against this robot invasion. So if you have a guitar with robo tuners on, just smash them up into pieces and throw them in the garbage. You're about to see what I believe to be the best robo tuner dissection video anywhere. So just grab some popcorn and enjoy the show. This should be really interesting. Uh, we'll be dissecting a set of robo tuners. Um, it's already half disassembled. Uh, we only need one of those. So this is a, the actual tuning machine. Um, and this is the toner, I guess it's called. Right. So there's a tuner here. These are the LEDs. Uh, it's it's a Gibson product, but it's it's made by uh, Tronicle. It's a German company. That's my understanding. The name is right here. It says Germany here. Uh, yeah. So um, this unit uh, takes a battery on the side, and um, it's got six buttons for the menu and whatnot. And uh, yeah, and this is a, a circuit board with uh, these contact pads here. Okay, we'll uh, have a closer look at this. We'll disassemble this unit. Now, I won't be able to tell you electronically how this thing works, but uh, mechanically, yeah, we'll get a good idea uh, because we'll take it apart. So um, I have a dissection kit right here. We'll be using. I have some other tools here in case I need them. Uh, first thing we'll need is a screwdriver. With this tip, this is it. So um, I already uh, measured this. Uh, this is a, a number zero Phillips uh, screwdriver tip, just in case you ever need it. That's the one that fits perfectly here. Um, so let's uh, remove the big parts first. So this is a, uh, it's a locking toner. So this locks the string. This is the ring nut. Okay. And the washer. Okay. So these uh, tuning machines are mounted through these holes. Okay. And then this whole unit goes on the back of the headstock, okay? Let's have a look at the toning knob first. So you, you can pull it out. It's friction fitted. It's a friction fit. So it, it comes off this way. Yeah? Um, I will be um, dissecting everything through the microscope. So you will have a uh, a really uh, good close-up view of everything. And I have this additional microscope as well, inspection microscope, in case we need it, it's right here. All right, so um, now let's uh, pull this knob off completely. So I already started pulling it. And you can see right here that it's a uh, knurled shaft okay so this is how it comes off it's a friction fit as you can see there is an internal thread uh, okay this is not used in this configuration but i would imagine that this is something that would be used if different uh knobs were used so 
those other knobs would clearly have a hole here and you put a screw through it and they would screw into this, right? We don't need this now. Uh, now let's, uh, let's take this apart. Uh, so we have two screws. So first we loosen the screws, both of them, just to make sure that they will be turning, okay? Yeah, no problem with this one. And here we have the other one. So let's remove it. Okay, this is it. This is the screw. Let's uh, have a closer look at this screw. It's not a machine thread, so it's it's uh, threaded into plastic, I guess. Doesn't look like a machine thread. Well, we'll have a closer look when we uh, dissect it. Right, so um, let's make sure we don't lose any small parts. I'll be putting everything here. And this is the other one. That's it. Okay. Put it here. Okay, this is good. Now, um, we should be able to just pull this apart. So let's just wiggle it a little bit. Maybe we uh, zoom in so we can see. Oh, yeah, it just, it can easily be removed. So uh, no problem there. Comes apart. This way. So let's look at this uh, part first. What we see here is uh, a gear. And, you know, I have to say that this is a high quality gear. It's really well made. There's a uh, grease here we see okay and uh, when you turn the shaft you can see that the gear moves now obviously it works the other way around uh, when this gear moves it turns the shaft right but you can see that this is connected clearly um, if we look at this part of the shaft we see that this is one piece of metal so we can't take this apart in order to disassemble it we would need to remove this gear and this to me looks like it's a friction fit uh, so i i don't want to remove it i think we see how this works and uh, this is good the way it is so i can place it here now um, here, why don't I place this under this microscope? Just let me focus. What we see here is a small gearbox. Okay. And so now we see that the screws were not threaded into plastic. but they don't really look like machine screws to me. I don't know. I guess that's not really important. We see those uh, contact terminals right here. Let's focus. They look to be gold plated to me. Okay, they are connected to the servo motor, which is this unit here. Okay, it's a miniature motor. And we see the gearbox, the other uh, screw is uh, 
going to go here, right? And this is the shaft for the tuning knob. Okay. Now, um, we want to see what happens, perhaps what happens when we turn um, the toning knob. So we put the knob back on the shaft. Okay, let's turn it. So I don't see these gears spin, but let's uh, look through the microscope. So we can see the gears at the bottom, they're spinning. When I turn this, okay, there's something happening there. So um, next thing we want to do is remove this motor. Look, it comes out easily. Let's look at the gear first. Uh, I believe this is called a pinion gear. Is it a plastic gear? Looks like nylon. So I don't know how durable this is. Sometimes plastic gears simply disintegrate over time. Especially when you put a lubricant on it, there's a chemical reaction that is slow, but over the years, that can simply fall apart and crumble into pieces. This happens uh, on 1980s equipment a lot, you know, turntables, cassette players. Okay. So here, this is interesting. So we see the internal uh, coil for the motor. And here we see these um, springs. They do look to be gold plated. And that's because, um, well, gold does not oxidize. So when these components are gold plated, uh, you ensure a good electrical connection between two parts, although this part here is not gold plated. But the pin is, but the gold is wearing off, okay, on this one. So this is a uh, nice here, nice view, because we can see through this um, slot, open slot, we can see the entire spring and how it's connected to the pin and then it's connected to this uh, terminal right here okay so I can't really push uh, the pin now because this is disassembled but they are spring loaded that's the motor I got some grease on my fingers. Yeah, so let's put it here. And yeah, excuse me. It's all greasy. Now we want to look at that gearbox up close. So why don't we do that? This is the gearbox. So this uh, this is where the, the pinion gear goes from the motor, right? It turns this gear, and then you can see how the gears are all connected. So what happens if I turn this?
Okay. So the gears at the bottom of the gearbox turn fast, and then um, they are all connected together. So the gears on top are turning much slower at a much slower speed. So this is uh, quite interesting. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, I'll just let you observe this. So if I turn it, this is how it spins. Very nice. Okay, I think we've seen enough. Um, we can reassemble this easily, I think. Uh, it wasn't difficult to uh, disassemble it. So basically this motor goes inside here. That's it. Maybe we turn this so that the gear spins so that it goes in place. And then this goes back here. And we need to spin the shaft so that the gears fall in the right place. The right places, right? The teeth. Okay, I won't be reassembling this now. <clears throat> now let's look at the electronic components. <clears throat> Got grease all over my fingers. Okay. Oh. Um, this unit is uh, Well, it's um, somehow assembled without screws. I don't see any screws. These look like uh, positioning pins. So what I am going to do is um, I'll take this, okay, uh, and try try to pry it open, see what happens. Let's start here. Oh, yeah. It actually comes off easily. Looks like it was disassembled at some point in the past. Uh, this is obviously used equipment. And we see uh, a double-sided adhesive tape. So that's all that's holding it together. Okay, just like that. Now, if we look at this uh, circuit board, we see the uh, connector here and this is a piezoelectric uh, pickup. I believe this is um, a sensor. It's, it's the same exact uh, type of pickup you would find uh, under the saddle of an acoustic guitar, right? To pick up the vibrations. And you have the same inside of a, a clip-on tuner. Okay. Uh, these are terminals, the contact pads. So that's the piezoelectric pickup. And the connector, we have here some electronic components. I don't know what they do. Those are called SMD components. Okay, which means uh, surface mount components microelectronics, okay? Now let's uh, remove this part. 
uh, maybe with this tool. Okay, that's those are that just snaps together as you can see. So we can just pry it open on both sides and it should come come off. Oh, there you go. Pretty easy. Let's see what's here. Let's put this aside for now. This is just a shell. It does have this uh, clip here, which is spring loaded. This is just for um, to hold the battery. Uh, so the battery slides in through the side. I don't have it. Uh, and it just uh, holds it in place, I think. It's a it's a push-push locking mechanism, uh, which I guess I can show you uh, a close-up of that. So here we do see a spring uh, right there inside. And yeah. On some cabinet doors, you have the same exact thing. You know, when you close the cabinet door and then you need to push it in in order to unlock it and open the door. Okay. But now uh, let's have a look at this. Okay, we have um, a circuit board on the inside. I don't see any screws, so I think we can just Pull it out. Yeah, just like that. Okay, here it is. Uh, let's look at this first. Uh, here we see uh, these uh, buttons. So if I uh, if I flip this, they will fall out. But these are the buttons that you see on the outside. The menu buttons, navigation. So here they are, and um, this is see-through, so light shines through and the LEDs illuminate uh, these letters and the BAT for battery and menu here, okay? That's that. Um, and the LEDs are here. We can see them right here. Uh, so there are six of them here, and so let's look at this unit, and two of them here, somewhere. One, two. Okay. Uh, through the microscope, we can clearly see the LEDs. Okay, so this is an LED right there. Another one, and uh, six of them here, six LEDs, okay? They are tiny. Um, once again, I can't explain how the circuit works. Um, I will be able to identify some of the electronic components, but I really don't know how it works. Uh, my understanding of electronics is limited, okay? I'm more of a mechanical person. So, yeah, uh, let's have a look. This is the... Uh, connector, obviously. Um, these are capacitors, if I'm not mistaken. So these big ones, are relatively big, are definitely capacitors. I think these small ones here are resistors. This could be a capacitor. Um, and then you have a whole bunch of microprocessors. Boom, boom, boom. 
So this is the motherboard, right? Wow. It looks all very neat. These are switches, right? So the buttons on the outside, the plastic buttons, push these switches. I'm not sure why this is here. Yeah. These here are resistors and these are capacitors. And I don't know about these, they're so tiny. But uh, every single one of them is needed, obviously. Very nice. I could look at this all day. This is a transistor. Um, I think this could be a power regulator. I'm not sure. Yeah, please let me know if you know more about electronics than I do. Uh, there's a comment section below. Feel free to use it wisely. And I wonder what this is. So I see a little bit of copper here. So I think this is, uh, whatchamacallit, um, an inductor, I believe if I'm not mistaken, and maybe I am mistaken. That's it. Oh, uh, two interesting components I just noticed. Right here, look at that. So this is uh, some kind of mechanical connection. We can push, you see, it's a spring loaded. It's a connector. So what is it for? Well, um, perhaps we should look at the kind of half reassemble it. If we place this here and just see, so the, this and this go, go together, these two go together. So, oh, I know what this is for. Um, the battery connects to these two, right? The battery slides in, and that's the connection for the battery. Easy. Um, well, that's it. I'm going to reassemble this. Obviously, I don't want to break anything. Um, and that's it, my friends. That's what's inside. I know you're still watching. Uh, how do I know that? Well, if you are seeing me now and hearing me, that means you're still watching. And if you're still watching, well, that means you like it. So click, click, you know what to do, right? Uh, yeah, you can also support this work uh, by clicking the button that says, buy me a coffee. Thank you, I need it, you know, because I stay up late. Look, it's 3 a.m. now, uh, editing those videos. So yeah, I, I need coffee. Uh, thank you. And you can also buy some Guitar Quackery merch downstairs, etc. Just check out the links. Um, yeah. Um, that's it. That's it. I gotta go. Like I said, it's 3 a.m. And uh, let's talk soon.